I'll just say a couple of words before we start. I'm just going to see if my colleague James is here. He might want to say a few words. Don't know if he is. James, if you're here, can you um, yes. say hello? You are here. Hello, my name. Hello. Yes, lovely. Great Hi. stuff. <laughs> so I will introduce the the um, uh, myself and the others who are speaking today. Um, so that's uh, me. I'm Ray Johansson Chapman, and you'd have heard from me when you got the the wonderful email um, to tell you how successful you were. Uh, and um, so I work for the Northwest London uh, uh, ICS, ICB, the Integrated Care Board, uh, and um, uh, and my job is the I'm the Insights Manager. I no, almost forgot what it was then. So I'm going to ask. Um, Amelia, if she can introduce herself. Of course, thanks, Ray. Uh, I am Amelia Goodall. I'm one of the communications managers at Northwest London ICD, otherwise known as NHS Northwest London. And I am supporting on the winter campaign, so developing resources and making sure that we have all the right communications going up. Uh, so that's my role. Thank you. Um, and we have Artie. Artie, could you just introduce yourself? Hello, hi, uh, my name is Arti. So I'm working as a business and EDI assistant. So I'll be helping with the finance side. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you. And James? Hello, my name's James. I'm one of the senior involvement managers for NHS Northwest London. I lead work, I formerly led work across Brent, Harrow and Hillingdon for three years. And now I lead work across Hounslow, Westminster, Kensington and Chelsea. Hammersmith and Fulham and it's quite a mouthful uh, but lovely to see everyone. Great that's fantastic thank you thanks James. Um, I'm just going to say that um, before we start we had a we had a um, this was probably the biggest uh, uh, um, number of applications that we've had um, for this winter campaign uh, it was a, there was a huge amount and it was very difficult actually going through them all um, and you, uh, you, all your success here today is, is 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 how good your applications were. So you you know congratulations to you all. And um, it was really it was really good reading them and going through them. And great to have you here today. So we're going to run through. Well, we've got a question first. So before we start, I think it's Rabia. You got your hands up. If you have indeed got your hand up, um, uh, you can ask your question. If not, it might be a legacy hand. Um, uh, this, the, uh, I'm also being asked another question in the chat, how long this will last. Hopefully, if we don't have too many, well, I, I don't mind the questions at all. It's great. But I think we we'll get through it in less than an hour. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to open the presentation. Um, and this may be this may be where we, we, we slow down because um, uh, I'm not always the best at doing this. Um, so. Hopefully, I will get the right presentation up, and and um, and Amelia will start the 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 um, the. Oops, maybe I've got the wrong. I have got the wrong one. I knew I would. Um, let me close that one down. That's last year's. In fact, uh, just bear with me a touch, and let me get the other one, uh, which has changed just ever so slightly, and I think that's the right one. And so I'm going to ask you if you can indeed see it. Can someone tell me if they can see. I'll put the thumbs up. Yeah. So I can only yes. see James. Yeah. Okay. See it. Yeah. Let me go right to the beginning. And that's the beginning of the presentation. So um, Amelia is going to start the presentation. Uh, um, and then Artie will say a few words. And then I will say a few words. And then it will be open to 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 questions. Um, so, Amelia, over to you. Of course. So, uh, just to open with uh, a little overview of the key messages, um, those who worked with us last year will know that um, these are kind of the key messages that are about winter wellness, alleviating pressure on some of our services, but fundamentally making sure our communities stay healthy this winter. Um, so, the key messages are uh, vaccination program uh, specific to winter. So, that's flu and COVID. Uh, vaccinations. Um, I'll go through later the um, cohorts that are eligible for this, um, largely similar to last year. Um, then the children's flu vaccinations, we're doing additional activity to support this 
Um, we've seen cases of children's flu and also flu in pregnant women um, are slightly on the rise and we just want to make sure that we can address that as soon as possible. Um, so there's a real focus on that, which for young children is the nasal spray. Um, where to go when you need help. So this is a really key one with um, quite a lot of messaging around uh, all the different services. There's a lot of people that if you ask them, they understand that the NHS is your GP or you know, emergency uh, hospital appointments. But actually, there are other methods people can use, other channels people can go through to make sure they get the help they need as soon as possible. And so we really want to raise awareness around those. Um, and then some additional messages, again, about health and well-being over winter. So the mental health support that people can get and just general keeping well information around how to access uh, prescription services, um, how to sort of look after your mental health and make sure that you're um, moving and eating, eating well, um, things like that. So next slide, please, Ray. Yep. Uh, so as mentioned, the flu and COVID-19 vaccination programme, we have a breakdown here of the eligible cohorts. Um, so young children aren't eligible for the COVID-19 vaccination, but as you can see, are eligible up to the age of 18 for, no, up to the age of 16, sorry, for flu vaccination. Uh, this will be delivered in schools. Um, so this will be run by Vaccinate UK uh, with a consent form, uh, but there will also be catch up clinics um, running all the way till December. So this is the key time to sort of share those messages uh, on this. In terms of resources, we've produced a Keeping Well This Winter leaflet, which you'll see a screenshot of there. Um, this is something that I'll move on to a point around translations that we can do, but also larger font text versions, which will be coming in the next sort of two weeks or so, um, will be on the order form that I run through later. Um, similarly, the flu vaccination leaflet, who should have it and why, is a really useful resource that goes into a lot more detail. So if people are looking for that, that is also available. Next slide, please. Uh, again, children's flu, so further resources that just break down the importance of the flu vaccination in young children. Uh, the programme actually started in September this year because it was such a priority to kind of nip it in the bud, if you will, um, making sure that as we get into the much colder months of November and December, um, that uh, older or more vulnerable uh, family members or friends um, are staying protected um, when, you know, you have family gatherings and things over Christmas time, etc. That's fine. So how to access services. So for this, we have both an easy read document and a full breakdown uh, kind of of where to go in terms of whether that's pharmacy, um, going to your GP, going to NHS 111, going to A&E, etc. Um, the importance of this is alleviating pressures on services, but also making sure patients can get the right help when it's needed. Um, so this is kind of a breakdown of where to go and when, um, and we have resources on that, like I say, both in a full detailed uh, double-sided A4, but also an easy read with much larger font, um, and much sort of clearer, more condensed messages. Um, again, uh, just to focus on where people can go so that they can get the help they need as soon as possible. Uh, next one. Uh, lastly, kind of a rundown of the additional messages that surround keeping well in winter and making sure our communities are living healthy lives. Um, so we have mental health support that's kind of focused on some of the lighter touch uh, resources around uh, anxiety, getting a good night's sleep, eating well, but also the more specific mental health services such as talking therapies um, and also uh, the crisis helplines that are available to support mental health patients in crisis. Um, we also have general health messaging around keeping active, staying connected with family members, and then accessing your prescriptions, making sure you stay up to date with those, all the kind of things that feed into your general health and well-being, uh, while not being a priority for winter, they're kind of always a priority. Um, but yeah, so we have resources on that as well. Uh, so. So here is a breakdown, as I mentioned, of the translations available. Um, you'll note when you receive or if you've already received the order form um, that that also encourages you to let us know 
which translations you'll need. We want to give you spoke um, languages that you are after based on the kind of communities that you work with. Um, so please do let us know and we can arrange translations of both uh, the knowing where to get the right help leaflet and also the keeping well this winter leaflet. Um, so if you can let us know that, then we can make sure we arrange that and get that sorted as quickly as possible. Um, so all, all order forms uh, due, you've got the next week to kind of let us know uh, the number of uh, any of these resources available um, that you're after and also what translations that you need. And I believe that order form has come from Ray. Is that correct? You've sent that. Yeah, perfect. OK. That's the, that's, sorry, Amelia, that was an abrupt end. Um, over to you, Artie. Thank you very much, Amelia. Thank you. So um, I assume a uh, few of you are like new suppliers uh, for the NHS. So uh, Ray would have sent an email with the instructions for uh, the document we require for setting you up as a new supplier in the system. So please um, send us those documents according to the instructions given on the screen, this slide, and uh, please uh, do CC me in as well, or uh, Liz Wall, my my manager. So either one of us get the email, and we can chase that up with the finance team. And uh, don't miss, please don't miss any of the instructions. We need uh, all the details mentioned uh, here in this instructions, or else you would be receiving another email from me chasing up with all the details again. So next slide, please, Ray. So once we've set up, um, set you up in the system, then uh, we would be releasing the payment with two halves, one fifty percent, and rest of the fifty percent once the work has been completed. So um, I will be writing a PO and sending you a PO uh, number for your organisation. So please, uh, I will. I will send an email with the instruction how we need the invoice. So um, please follow the instructions and send us the invoice uh, with the PO number added into it so we can release the first part of the payment. And uh, please do not send both the uh, invoices or uh, both the parts together. So we would only accept first part, like initial payment invoices first. So um, I will I will send the email instructions once the PO is raised um, and as per the slide says as well. So that's it for the finance part. If any if you need any clarification, you can email me. I can pop in my email or you can email Liz Wall. The email address is given in the slide. Yeah, I think there is a question. Sam. Sorry. Okay, yes. Um, sorry to uh, budge in now. Uh, I yeah. received an email yeah. about electronically in, electronic invoices to NHS. Was that coming from yourself or is a scam or something? Ele uh, sorry, electronic invoice. Yeah. So uh, um, it says that... Um, I'm being contacted on behalf of the NHS organizations. Okay. Whom that I wish to um, invoice and that they are moving to electronic invoicing. So we are asking all invoices to be submitted to NHS shared business services electronically through trade shift suppliers. Does that sound like something coming from you? I got it. Yesterday. I, um, I don't think it'd be part of this, um, Sam, no. but we, we can pick it up offline. OK, right. So I'll send it to you, right? Yeah, we'll pick, we'll so, pick it up with you. Uh, yeah, and, and we'll look into that. Um, uh, okay. uh, I'll, take, I'll take some questions uh, in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to give you um, uh, some feedback in terms of what we'd like you to do in terms of collecting the data. So thank you, Artie, very much. Um, thank you. So g going forward, um, what we will be sending you, uh, and some of you did it last year, who was, who who we um, 
who were successful with their applications last year, is that we will be sending you a series of, of, of templates um, and uh, not a series, uh, two templates. Uh, uh, and um, those templates are a bit like surveys. But what we'll be asking you to do is, is when you go out and talk to your, your client groups, when you go out and talk to your communities, and th there are multiple ways in which you may want to do that. You may well have events, you may well have focus groups, you may well do one-to-one -one interviews, you may well do leaflet drops, you may well um, uh, um, have uh, um, just general conversations in the streets. And and what, what, we, what we really want is, is for you to capture that data as best as you possibly can so the the templates that we sent you will, will aid you in terms of doing that so we would want to know the numbers of leaflets you've, you've handed out for example we would want to know um the the uh, uh, the client groups that you've spoken to uh, and as best as you possibly can to capture the age ranges to capture the 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 ethnicity if if, if you can uh, uh, um and 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 then we'd want what's really important is is the qualitative information as well. All of that, all of those conversations that that you collect are really really important for us to decipher and and to to make sense of. And that's really really important to us to 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 learn from 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 your feedback. What I'd also like you to do is 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 give your opinion in terms of. Um, so there'd be a, there'd be a question for you in terms of your views and what you think about. Uh, some of the feedback that that you've received. Now, it, it's it's up to you when you. We would want that feedback from you bi monthly, um, at the last possible, at, at at the minimum, I suppose. But you can send it in whenever you wish. So as long when you've collected enough data, you can forward it on to us, and then we will send you another template. So so we want as much information as you can possibly get. Um, uh, and I can answer any questions about that. Now, if you have any, when we send the templates out, if there's something that you don't understand, we're happy to meet with you on a one-to-one -one basis to to go through the the, the template with you, uh, and and uh, or you can just send me an email and say you're not sure about this or you're not sure about a particular question, and we will also send you a guide of questions that you could ask. You don't have to you don't have to ask those questions in, the, in those in the way that we write the question, but it'd be a guide for you. So it'll help you along the route in terms of the sort of information we're looking for, uh, and 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 the sort of information that, that 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 you've received. So I think on that particular note, I will end. Uh, whatever we've got to say now and and open it up to questions. And it's fantastic if there isn't any, but um, uh, I'm sure James will have a question. No, we have one from Pfizer. Hi, Pfizer. How are you doing? Yeah, hi. Thank you, Ray, and the team for um, the information provided. And thank you again for the opportunity to work with you again as well this year. Uh, I guess notice from the list you put for the language um, material, I haven't seen uh, Farsi and one of our partners working with this group and definitely they need material on that because they all the time struggling with language and saying they only understand in their language and I guess wonder if that can be provided. One question, the second one is, I remember when we done this project last year, there is so much in, insight around people not accessing 111 services because of different reasons, because the language, lack of confidence. And I guess wonder if we are going to go again and ask them again, and they already explained why they're not accessing these services because of the different reason, the language barrier, the lack of confidence, and even they're not sure what this service provides for them. This is why they're reluctant to use it. I guess wonder if since last year, is there any way we can do something around that? Because they just don't want to keep going to the committee asking them the same things when they already raised their concern and they, the barrier that looks at the surfaces. Sorry to be. Uh, well, I, I, I'll, I'll come back to I'll come back to the to the first point. Maybe Amelia will have more to say than me, but I, I believe that. If you've identified you identified a language that you that that you would want leaflets in, then mm. you just you put that in into the into the Excel spreadsheet and let us know, and we will um, try to get the, those those uh, those leaflets printed in that particular language. Is that right, Amelia? Yep, that's right. So if you just note down which resource and which number of uh, 
what quantity you need, um, then we can arrange that in the coming weeks. Um, so the sooner the better you can let us know so that we can make sure uh, we get in touch with our translator. Thank you. I was about to answer your second point, but maybe James wants to come in on that one because he put his hand up straight away. So um, mm -hmm. over to you, James. Yeah, thank you, Ray. And nice to see you, Pfizer. Um, so I think actually one of the one of the real positives with this, I think this is the third winter that this project, this program has been running. And obviously with anything, you try to get a little bit better, a little bit more impactful with each time you do something. And I think one of the really positive elements this year is that myself and my colleagues who work in the involvement team, we've worked very closely with Emilia and Karen in the comms team and with Ray in the insights team uh, to, to actually I suppose, provide additional support for the organisations that we're going to be working with this winter in a very live basis. And so one of the things that this is the second such session we've had in terms of giving some, in, uh, some information and the like on the programme. Uh, one of the things I said in the prior session is that what myself and my team will be looking to do is we now have uh, an involvement manager. So one staff member allocated to each of the boroughs in northwest London. That was not the case uh, even just a few months ago. What this allows for us is to actually be able to have one point of contact in the borough or boroughs that you're working with who you can be getting in touch with. So if you have any live requests for support, whether it's a question about, you know what, we're taking out childhood immunization messaging and it's just not quite landing. We're hearing this, we're hearing that. It's kind of turning people off as opposed to getting people more interested. Then alongside Ray, you'll have that local point of contact to have a conversation with to see how you can reshape that. And I would suggest with 111 actually, Pfizer, I have a couple of contacts who are very interested. Uh, they're from NHS London in speaking with some of our underserved communities about 111. So that's another opportunity where now we're going to be more closely linked in. We can help with that additional support. So if there is a topic, maybe there's a slightly different angle or someone we could bring to a session who has a mm -hmm. bit more information. So a bit of a general offer for support there. We'll be very keen to understand what workshop sessions, events that you're doing mm -hmm. so we can start to come along to some of these and support mm -hmm. them live. But then also actually having that nominated point of contact alongside who of course has dozens and dozens and dozens of groups to work with will hopefully help in terms of I suppose boosting some of those messages Pfizer because I think one thing that we're all aware vaccinations 111 access to GP surgeries a lot mm. of the topics come up over and over again because they're systematic mm. problems so mm. from our perspective we're really keen to see how we can start to just have more nuance to the conversation and the messaging mm. um, so hopefully that goes some way towards answering your question Pfizer and, and Ray hopefully that was a helpful yeah, very good. For you too. Thank you. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and and I think Pfizer, if you do just just to add on from what James is saying, if you are hearing the same sort of messages, which I'm sure you will be, um, mm. is that we, let us know and we will feed that directly to one one one. And, mm -hmm. and 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 then we could see if we could get one on one to come to some of your future sessions and that'd be really useful um I'll just um take the next question and it's from uh Hassan hello hi hello. um we have hi. the wrong name on on the screen it's interlock by the way um, um from the album yeah um my question to you guys is so the leaflets when we put in the amount of numbers that we want is there a maximum that we can ask for or is it just how uh, and ideally how how much do you want us to be sharing these leaflets is it every session that we're having is it every event or is it like a one-time thing so we know how to like manage the numbers when we're requesting this i'll let Emilia after the first parts of the first part part and it's really just, I suppose, your reasoning. If you think there is a valid reason to need um, a number of leaflets, that's OK. But we're also thinking and are open to feedback. So potentially if you ask for an order run, you might hear back on certain comments and we can take an agile approach to, to how we take that feedback on board. So it's not necessarily a case of if you don't put the right amount in the first order form, that's it. That's one and done. Um, we all encourage to to come back and you might need more. Obviously, just from an environmental perspective, the more paper we could save, the better. So just if you need to do two, three orders, uh, we can get those delivered kind of within sort of a, a week long turnaround. So better to kind of pull back slightly um, on what you think you might need. But of course, within reason, if you think you need a high number, uh, please do. 
put that in. And on, on your second point, I think in many ways, in terms of distributing your leaflets and handing them out, they're your leaflets. You know your community is far better than we do. And if you feel that 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 you need to you need to hand them out, um, and and they work on a on a on a one to one session, uh, or, or they work in in any particular way that you organise how you're going to talk to your communities, then that that's down to you how how you do that. And as as Amelia just said, if you feel that you need to get more leaflets, then then you come back to us and we try and get you more. Um, James. I think spot on, and just to add uh, my my thoughts as well, because I always have to. No, I'm joking. Um, I think uh, you know you, you may find that it's a helpful prop to start a conversation, and so you're handing out quite a lot of them. You might find that it's not a particularly helpful prop, but it's better as something passive. So you know, kind of on a desk or a table, buy some coffees and teas, whatever it might be. So yeah, like Ray says, I think it's kind of a suck and see situation. Maybe order a small bundle initially would be my recommendation from working with community groups and then working with Amelia and Ray and colleagues. If you do need more, then just get in touch and then build up from there. But I'd probably recommend starting fairly small, like maybe a couple of hundred, just to see how you get on. Um, any other questions? Open to any questions within this particular. Um, not about Manchester United, I don't want to talk about that. Um, any questions? Um, we have one. Uh, yeah, hi, hi. Is it Ruchi? Yeah, hi. Uh, I just have a question about the bi monthly reports. Um, so, is there yeah. a specific date that you expect us to send you the report by? Like, how? How will that work? Just well, you, the the report will be. Um, it, it, I, I didn't explain. I've, I've it's as I, I, after I finished explaining, then I realised I didn't give you all of the information and all of the information. But you'll see it when you get the template. Is that it will be it will be a link, and it'll be like electronic link. And you may want to gather your information as you go on, and you may want to gather it weekly on a weekly basis, and then input it into the then input it into in, in, into the link, and that link goes directly into our database, um, where we can, and it's a super database where it needs data, and what it does is it, it enables us to to analyse qualitative data and quantitative data, and really get some interesting themes and insights from it so it's it's how you want to do it really but but i would suggest i would suggest if you could gather your information and uh, because you don't want to keep you, you probably don't want to keep it will be too thin if you send it in um after a week or or you know after a short period of time so, and and what you what you want to be doing i i think yourself is is that as you as you gather your information it will start to generate your own thoughts and feelings about what it is you're collecting so when you put your own comments in about what you've heard and what you've done then it'll be much much richer i think so so i would gather the information and then towards the end of the 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 you know the the date then start to input it but if you feel it's too much and you want to input it a month before then, then you're welcome to do that. Uh, Darina. Oh, is it? Yeah, I'll take Darina first and I'll come back to you, Hassan. Hi, sorry. Uh, all I want is just to order the form. I wasn't able to, to find that, please. I may have that. You should have that, but I'll resend it. I'll resend it if, if you haven't got it. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. OK. Uh, Hassan again. You're mute. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Um. So I also wanted to ask, in terms of like, with our plan and everything, not mm. that there's a right way to go about executing the program, but if we could yeah. get some feedback on our plan, Definitely. how would we go about that? Would you can send that to myself and and uh, and James and I would be very happy to look at that. That would be brilliant. Yeah. So if anyone wants to send your plan and what it is you intend to do and how you intend to go about uh, uh, working with your communities and you want some feedback, uh, we'd be, we'd be we will gladly um, mm. uh, um, look at that and and uh, discuss with you on Teams if if you wish. 
We can do email feedback or we can have a discussion on Teams. James, you want to add? Just a really quick thing to add as well. I think actually, you know, I love the idea of consortium approaches and aligning with other organizations and other groups who may be doing similar pieces of work, whether it's in a different part of the borough or a different borough entirely, or even the same part of the borough. I think for us, it's really how we can support that collaborative nature. So if you do have your kind of proposal, your plan for how you're going to deliver and you'd like to understand, are there anyone doing similar things with similar population profiles or in similar areas, then give us a shout because we'd be more than happy to link people up and to share best practice and join up some of that learning. So I think that's something which really, you know, the, the breadth of groups we have at the moment is, is really impressive. We're really grateful for you guys getting in touch and, and putting the work in for it. So we'd be more than keen and happy uh, to share as much of the love around as possible. Pfizer. Yeah, I, uh, two of our partners will be focusing on families and children and two with adults. I guess my question is they should only focus on that. For example, if some adult came to their session, it will be OK to work with them as well. I guess they can maybe when they order some materials, they can maybe focus on the families and then ask for a little bit of extra adult as well. Or guess they should focus on what they requested on the application form. Um. I, I I would well if it, if it feels like it naturally expands and then then mm. I, 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 I would I, I would do that mm, okay thank you but again let's have a conversation okay thanks which is open to all of you um, obviously mm -hmm. we're gonna have a lot of conversations but that would be great <laughs> that's that's really good thank you um, anything any any other concerns I, I would I would just add um, just to go back on 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 Amelia's point about the the the, the leaflets and and the the information um, I, I think I think you know if you can get that back to us that information and 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 it's much better if you put it in the Excel spreadsheet it let me know if you haven't got that you should have it but if you haven't got that Doreena I'll send one another one back out to you um but but do input it in the Excel spreadsheet rather than sending it to me uh, in uh, as 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 an email um just put it in the Excel spreadsheet um because it's much much easier for for those guys to 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 manage in that sense uh and um and if you have any questions about um the finance, then Liz and Artie are perfect in terms of being able to respond to those questions. Um, we have, uh, when can we get the recording of this webinar? As soon as I get the link, um, uh, I, I have to download this 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 link and then send it to my colleague and my colleague who's sitting right there now, she will upload it into YouTube and then I will send it out to you along with the presentation. Um, uh, do we, do have we have a, any any more questions? Yes, please. I just oh, we do. We do. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, no problem. It's uh, is there any electronic like uh, messages or um, that we can share it, for example, within the chat groups, which makes it uh, a brief and. Uh, you know, symbol so that people can catch the message. Is there any that type of electronic leaflets and messages? Or? Maybe Amelia might be best place to answer that. Although James, is is it looks like he might be eager to come in. Um, whoever's first to the line, James. I'm first, sorry. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's a brilliant idea after Lizzie's. Um, you know, like via WhatsApp groups or Facebook uh, pages or whatever it might be. That'd be something we'd really be hoping that we'd be able to, I suppose, get the messages across via your guys' connections into the community. And so now I will defer to seed ground to Amelia, but I think that's something that we can just extract, isn't it, Amelia? Those kind of short snippet type posts for these formats, do you think? Yeah, of course. So actually, we do have um, a communications toolkit, which actually is included in this presentation. So that's a good flag. So that actually has um, some social media copy um, for um, kind of all of these key messages that we've pulled together. Um, and these perfectly also translate to, to being WhatsApp messages. Um, we can also share those and then get your feedback if they need to be slightly amended in terms of sort of how they're written. Um, but it'd be great to have that 
back and forth just to make sure they are still true to um, the kind of health message that sits behind them. Um, but yes, I will share include that toolkit um, in this uh, presentation deck so that you can look at those shorter form messages as well as the press release that we put together, some of our key messages around vaccination, but also uh, access to services. Um, I have a question on, on your behalf. Um, uh, it's to Artie. Artie, um, uh, obviously those those organisations that are known to us and are in our system and we work with you before, then we have no problem in terms of, of, of in, uh, sorting out the invoice with you. But for those that are new to us, Artie, how long will it take, do you think, before we can get them on the system? So, um, like, I would say maybe I would give it one one week. It depends on if they send us uh, like uh, the information soon, like asked according to the template, we can uh, push it to the finance and maximum one or two weeks they would be in the system. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions. I don't think we do. Is that a legacy hand that we've got? Oh, we do have a question. Great. OK. Thank you very much. Um, no my name is Abdul Aziz. Um, I have, my first question is, I'm just uh, inquiring whether I, we have sent it, what we have done in terms of the requests for the advice materials, the linguistic advice materials, we have responded to the same email. I hope that is the correct way to request those materials. Uh, for the for the um, for the leaflets, you mean? Yes. Yeah, that 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 that. Yeah, you you've sent it to me. That's great. And what I do, what I've done is is is, um, and I will contact uh, any organisation, any of you, the community group that I I haven't heard from, or at least I don't think I've heard from. I will contact you um, to tomorrow or, or Friday just to verify. Uh, how many leaflets you want and 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 for you to encourage you to send your excel spreadsheet to us but i have yours and what i what i've done is i have i have um i i collect them all and, and i send them to amelia and to karen and so you have sent it in a long-winded way you have sent it to the right email address yes thank you thanks very much uh, um the other thing i i i think we we have already started some preliminary work uh, in terms of the vaccine, and we have done That's some fantastic. work uh, in respect to <laughs> vaccine dryer. So it it is it is um you know um, I must share you know uh, the one of the challenges that you know many of the projects will come across would be the misinformation about the vaccine and that would yeah. be one of the main barriers um you know be how people perceive you know not only um covid vaccine but in general you know um vaccine so you you know it, it is going to be a really uh, hard work you know trying to you know challenge those um you know, well set views. Um, we have already had some, you know, um, you know, feedback in terms of where we want to display the leaflets, where we want it would be much more useful. You know, this would be main community hubs like local butchers, like local cafes, places that people gather and they can pick up the leaflet and discuss among them. But we will also over our own leaflet, which will over a discussion in terms of, you know, why we are advising people to take the advice. If they want to follow it up, hopefully we'll link it, you know, we'll link with you and, you know, the wine going to test. That, that's really brilliant feedback. That's fantastic. And and I I, 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 I would like to ask if, if um, before I bring James in, because he might be asking the same thing, is, is that if you could send any of that information that you've collected already, just in an email to me that would be fantastic really 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 useful and really great feedback thank you very much james yeah i think it's a really important point in general uh with this sort of work and and it almost kind of alludes actually to or, or relates to what pfizer said about 111 you know the idea of a bit of kind of exhaustion with the same messages 
kind of coming ag again and again and again. And of course, we know when it comes to vaccinations, historically, there's been uh, hesitancy uh, am among kind of, um, uh, I suppose, a small amount of the population, but it's always remained quite a consistent number. You know, it's always been quite a sizable minority of the population who hold that hesitancy. What we see following all of the vaccinations uh, for COVID-19, starting what late 2020 early 2021 is that that vaccine hesitancy across the boards whether it's for children or whether it's covid boosters or whether it's flu is actually going up a bit we're seeing uptake of all those vaccines dip a little bit um and there's many reasons for that of course and actually after disease colleagues you know all of you who are doing work with with those who are a bit hesitant and decline the offer you, you'll know that significantly better than myself ray amelia uh and and Artie do i suppose a couple of things to note so we're very keen on what we call it the nudge philosophy. So not the idea of actually, you know, if someone's very kind of anti-vaccine for whatever reason they might have, not kind of standing there and having a big argument, which never ends about kind of what, you know, this is why you should, this is the case for it. This is the evidence. It's unbelievable that you're not blah, blah, blah. Instead, it's very much about nudging, holding the line and kind of stating that, you know, like, the, the the medical consensus is that this is a positive thing so for us if it's something you're hesitant about it's really important for us to understand well what has made you and, and what are you concerned about so we can over the years and, and and that long battle really start to nudge away at that rump of uh that that very vocal minority who, who are quite hesitant and the second and final thing i'll say is we do work really really closely with what we call the roving team and some of you will know these the, these colleagues. So they work across Northwest London, and they have clinical colleagues who are happy to come along to community events to talk about these sorts of conversations with a lot more specialist knowledge than I might hold as a non clinician. Um, so that's an offer that we can help to coordinate if that's something of interest, particularly if you have slightly larger sessions. They do also have a secondary offer, which I think you know would be fully up to you guys whether you want to explore and some of you will already know this but they are also sometimes able to actually offer vaccination sessions so to come along and actually deliver and administer uh, vaccines but i think for us the primary thing is about understanding if people are hesitant why they are that nudge philosophy kind of holding the line and giving the evidence as we see it but not sort of engaging in a big argument about it and yeah, that kind of additional offer that if you would like to take that up and actually have someone come along who's clinically trained, who can have some of these conversations, then get in touch with Ray probably as the initial conduit. And then we're happy to support in terms of helping that conversation take place if you think it'd be relevant for your session or event. Thanks, James. Amelia, uh, there's just one that I've just noticed in the chat. and Maybe you, you, you've answered it and I've missed it. Is that how long will it take for the leaflets to arrive? On average, uh, that, that does depend when the order forms come in. We need to then consolidate everyone's kind of orders, pull them together um, and then get in touch with our printers. But that can be as quickly then as next day or two day delivery. Um, so uh, the deadline obviously is the 9th of October. So we hope to get those to you um, by the end of that week, if not um, early the next week. The only thing that will take longer than that is the translations. So as you know, we're offering a bespoke range of translations. Some of those resources we do already have as a, on the slide deck, you'll see some of the translations, which we do have kind of in-house already, which we can send out. Um, but others, if you're looking for bespoke languages that we don't currently have on file, um, that will take a little bit longer to source, um, but we'll of course try and get that to you by uh, late October. Thank you very much, great. Um, we might be coming to the end of the session now, unless there's any burning questions. Um, not for now. Um, and on, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much for attending and, and congratulations once again for really strong applications. Uh, and a re we really look forward to working with you. Um, and you probably hear a lot more from James and I uh, um, than, than you may wish care to imagine but it's only because we care and we want to work really closely with you and it'd be really great doing that so um thank you very much and i'll get this this link to you this recorded session to you and the presentation as quickly as possible